Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Kaguya-sama Love is War episode 3 and potentially episode 4 because it aired today and we have it so we might watch it, but I don't know. We'll we'll see how much time episode 1 takes and decide whether I want to watch another one. Um, it's possible, but not, not, not definite, not locked in. Last time, not last week really because it's been a little bit more than a week, last time on Kaguya-sama we focused mostly on uh, the president's birthday and all of the various game of love things that occurred around that and it was, a, it was a pretty good time with uh eventually giving a little fan and some other stuff and it was it was good there's not much point talking about what has come before because usually it's pretty disconnected i guess there was a connection between episode two and episode one with the whole birthday thing and i guess a connection to episode season one late episodes when we were talking about the whole birthday thing but um yeah it's pretty pretty pretty, pretty disconnected we can just jump into the next episode and watch it and have fun. So that's what we're going to do. I've got episode three of Kaguya-sama up and ready to go. It's sitting at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction, uh, as usual. I have I have changed the subtrack. Uh, a lot of people did not like the GJM subs that I was using. Whoops. Uh, I assumed that waiting for them would be a good idea. It seems that people disagree. So I'm just using the horrible subs version and hopefully, hopefully that's good. Let me know if that's good. I'll, I'll endeavor to use the best subs that I can use in the future. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there will be two versions. Picture in picture version with the video up there will be found in the description. Time based version will be up on YouTube. If you want to do a sync thing, sync up your own copy of the episode with the time based version, you are welcome to do so. Just get your copy ready because the beep beep timer to count you down will be coming at you now. On the Plex. All right, straight into it. It's a really good looking bento. Ow. All right. Hey. Hmm. What's the the bunny ears for? Yeah, what? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Huh. Nice. What? Or does he mean that we'll all graduate out? Why the bunny ears exactly? Oh. Nice. <laughs> I don't get it. With the, with the president. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Yeah. 
Uh huh. If I wouldn't worry about them. Hmm. Are you just trying to get her out of the way? <laughs> A little too easy. Ha 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 ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. And how will this go terribly wrong? Oh, he made the first move. What's up? Let's go, Shirogane. <laughs> and the tables have turned. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I got what I wanted. It'll warm you up. Ah, an indirect kiss. N nothing. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> He's not even picking up. Damn. <laughs> this is impossible. I must tear down the moon. <laughs> and thus Fine was born. <laughs> 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 uh huh, uh huh. Oh, God, it's she's back, and in reality, not at all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm assuming Shirogane loses. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. As long as his mind isn't on it, he's smooth as butter. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Hmm.
Fuck, we're actually having a legitimate moment in Kaguya-sama before the finale. What? Hmm, I wonder if this is a metaphor for our own relationship, not picking up on the message. Hmm. And he very literally just said, I'll never let you go. That was, oh, we're going to do this. <laughs> stop, stop it, stop it, too much. Oh. Nope. No, you, you are terrible at reading the meaning between the lines. And the moon is broken. Die Buster? Bye, Kaguya. <laughs> Is she back? The moon just looming. <laughs> what happened? What? What was that? This isn't the start of a new bit. <laughs> ah, okay. Just, just real delayed. And the moon is still split in half. Okay. I feel like they both kind of lost in that situation, but okay. From the room? Or from... Yeah... We're packing it up. Hmm. <laughs> that was quite a moment. <laughs> Thank God. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Why are we doing... Why are we doing this, this weird, like, nostalgic recappy stuff? This is weird. You did. <laughs> yep. That was a fun one, except for you. Wait, I thought you were here for that. Huh. Uh-huh. Mariage. <laughs> That's how I feel about Cyphus posting food in my Discord. It's not fair. Uh... Yeah, you do. <laughs> You're about to get hit by it again. There we go. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. 
Like, this is, this is, like, we're ending. Why is he taking toilet paper exactly? I don't know. So what's the, where's, where's, where's the punchline? What's the joke? Because the show doesn't end here. It's not. So, what am I missing? Uh. Uh. Ha. Their base? Whose base? What? No, no, wait. No, 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 no. Wait, what? No. Okay, a door shutting. Cheek is the only one who seems to notice and see it. Aww. I mean, we're really playing this up. I'm, wait I'm waiting for the rug pull. Rug pull, shoe drop, undercut, whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there still next year or am I missing something? Almost time to switch to our winter uniforms. Okay, so they're still in school. They've, they've still got another year. Okay. Nope, they've got successors. What? Are we just going to move to to the attached university? Oh. Ah. <laughs> ah, oh poor buddy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. President, President Chica, God help us. Yeah. <laughs> please, please stop laughing at me. It's not that funny. You'll, you'll always be my, the president of my heart. Yeah. <laughs> you actually have to call him Shiragane? <laughs> <gasps> or his first name? <gasps> Cheek is about to call him... Call him that without even a thought. Uh-huh. Bruh, now you're just trying. <laughs> Mew! 
<laughs> oh no, is she gonna try to come up with another one? <laughs> A wanton hussy. Mukun san. Oh boy. Eh. And not using the name. Me. She can't do it. <laughs> she still can't do it. <laughs> ah. Mm hmm. Okay, so there's. St I'm so confused by the circumstances now. Okay. Well, that can't happen. At all. You could. You could. <laughs> I think you've left somebody out. Uh-huh. Funny, funny. Sure. Bruh. Fuck that. Fuck that. That's not gonna happen. No way, Jose. I would prefer if you were a little bit selfish. I think you would prefer it too. Hmm. Mm hmm. Kotowaru. <laughs> Is it the letter? Oh, student council application. He's already applied. Ha ha ha. Winner. Winner. Oh, you sneak. He sure did. A hundred percent. It's a wash. Well played. Well played. All right. Ha. Huh. Just covering all the bases. Who is that standing in front of the board? I don't know. Is this the same? I don't remember this. Okay, yes I do. I changed my mind, I was wrong. <laughs>
Okay, good stuff. Fun episode of Kaguya. Weird episode of Kaguya. Weird because of the amount of it that is serious. It's kind of interesting. Just just how much of this episode functions seriously. It's very strange. Also, what's the deal with this eye catch? Yeah, this is very strange. Uh, the, the opening riff of it, of the audio, of the music, is pretty clearly, like, it's meant to, to evoke the X-Files theme. Here, I'll, I'll play one and then the other. Okay, and then... Really familiar, right? It's very strange. I, I don't quite get it. And I'm not sure what the visual is supposed to be. I know it's something, because it goes into this this obviously sketched out style that's clearly referencing something. I just don't know what. And I, when I first saw the moon splitting in half, I thought Die Buster, but that's not what this is. So no idea what this yellow and green and blue is, but I'm sure it's something. Okay, that's that's kind of neither here nor there. I just happened to, to skip past that uh, that eye catch and remember that it's fucking crazy. And it is. It's, it's pretty freaking crazy. So, we go moon gazing. Kaguya is not having any of it, but it is a good scheme for her to get closer to the president once she at least gets rid of the third wheels, which she does relatively easily. Then we are treated to uh, Kaguya headspace, where she goes through hypothetical situations and how they will play out perfectly in, their, in her favor, which they absolutely will not do in reality. And we continuously turn those situations against her because she is just not expecting that Shirogani will actually be smooth about this. She's trying to, to bait him and make him freak out. But he ends up doing the thing and making her freak out and turning the tables, and it's 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 pretty fun. It's pretty fun, and just just the idea that Shirogane, who we have seen over and over and over and over many times, get super flustered and and fuck himself over during plans like this in the same way that Kaguya does. Uh, his mind is off of it. His mind is on the moon and on other things, and he is smooth as can be. He's fucking Casanova over here, uh, you know, going for the shoulder pull. He's going for everything. He's got it. Got it on lock. But he's essentially on autopilot. Like, he can't consciously recreate this kind of behavior. You just can't. <laughs> so this is a great a great gag and one that, that works across all of its little iterations all, all built throughout this. It's, it's really good all the way through. Um, yeah, and then dragging her down and just absolutely oblivious to to the way that she's feeling about this we get we get little hints of bakagia uh mixed into the mix definitely bakagia is becoming a bit more of her character it's like a it's a, it's a little bit of a larger slice of the pie which is nice it's a little a little less repressed a little less limited than the uh the other option okay but then Something kind of interesting happens. This part of the conversation. Once, once she says, I get it, and then admits her real feelings, and, and this is crucial, um, this conversation is happening in the first place because she asked a question that's based on like a, a meta thing, right? It's not a question that she actually wants to know. She just thinks that by asking this question, she will be gaining points on the love meter, essentially, right? Guys love it when you ask about their interests. Okay, that's why she's asking. So the conversation is built on falsehood. And then she changes that. As he goes on with the explanation... She, he, he then goes into the moon reminding me of Princess Kaguya, and her response is, of course, and at this point, it becomes serious. I can't help but think of that story. That's why I hate the moon. The truth comes out, and from there, we can actually discuss. We can actually have a conversation. And his side of the conversation is a, a different interpretation of the story. I don't see it that way. I saw it as not, not a, a futile gesture, but one of a promise that I would eventually come back. Or that she would eventually come back. And then some things that turn out 
because of context and because of the way he's phrasing them, they end up being like the most romantic statements ever. Partly because he's using Kaguya's name because it's Princess Kaguya, uh, and partly because of just the way he he goes about it. That no matter what, no matter what, I would go for it. But there's also a a a, a funny kind of irony in his in his statements because. Like, where where does he say, I would read between the lines? Hello, subs? With the meaning, I'll wait for you forever. The man didn't pick up on her message. What other uh, uh, relationship are we aware of where characters frequently don't pick up on each other's messages? Oh, it's this one. It's a cruel story. If it had been me, I never would have let Kaguya go. And because of because of the quirks of Japanese grammar, what he effectively says is Yeah. He he it's the equivalent of saying like I would have never let you go, right? Because this statement would have made sense if he were directing it at Kaguya, even if he used her name within that statement, right? Because it's it's relatively common to do that uh instead of using like a you anata or yeah oh my so it's essentially he he just said i would never let kaguya go i would go but go to the moon and, and bring her back and so of course she freaks out all right and then we we dive straight into full-on tropification this is this is like jesus <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a more explicit example of somebody aware that they are using a particular trope and just inserting the trope. <laughs> There's, it's so aware. This, this is, of course, the the reach for the star or reach for the moon uh, uh, trope or or grasp insert celestial celestial body here as a trope, but it's just it's just there. So we have this serious conversation, and then it kind of explodes. Kaguya dies. Rip Kaguya. It's too embarrassing. I can't deal with it. And the moon looms over them. And they're just way on the outs. Yeah, so it's just it's just X-Files theme, boom. Actually, let me let me do like X-Files like logo or something. X-Files logo. Because I haven't watched that much X-Files. No, that would have been no. I was wondering if there was like a an exploded moon or three characters in blue and green and yellow, but no, no none of the above are a thing. And finally, he wakes up the next day and realizes that he definitely did not do the things that he wish he did wish he had done. I do like the little continuity that the moon is still broken in half. That's good. It's a good moment. And I love this little eye catch here. This is amazing. That yes. Excellent. Okay, so choosing things to take home. This is the other weird part of the episode. Because this whole sequence, which leads right up to the end, to the very end of the episode, all the way through, this whole sequence is played straight. And that's very weird. Very weird. I mean, it's, it's super weird. What's even weirder is that it's playing it straight while overplaying it. I don't think it works. I don't think it works. Part of that has to do with, with audience expectations for the show. Like, when a segment starts in Kaguya-sama, everything is suspicious. Everything that's going on on screen, when we first start this this emotionally driven, nostalgic, we're packing up and leaving segment, everything that's occurring is suspicious to me. My immediate first impression is, this is building to a joke. Because that's what Kaguya has done before, over and over and over and over and over and over and over, multiple times per episode in every single segment. Except, when it's clearly distinguished, when it's like the fireworks episode... Or I guess portions of the first half of this episode.
But then what's going on is that they're they're overplaying it. They're over overdoing it. The music choices for the entire sequence are melodramatic and too much. The particular things that they focus on to get nostalgic about are things that we know about and maybe are nostalgic about, but uh, they're they're kind of strange things to get that emotional about. And there are gags and jokes and little things in between, but the overall feeling of the segment is somber and nostalgic and wistful, and all of that is legitimate and played straight. And I don't think that works. And then there are things like this, where they're doing the sentimental, right? These are, are and a number of the lines that the characters say are classic, oft-repeated, uh, the characters are graduating out of their three-year run of, of whatever school they're in at the moment, right? So manga's ending, we gotta end it. So we have our characters say things like this, people change and grow. But in, in the meantime, that's at, at, in direct contrast with what's actually going on screen. It's zero growth. And it's ridiculous. Okay. It's hilarious. Granted. Thank you. I was waiting for a joke. And there isn't one. Also, what's the deal with this? There's a staircase, and it goes somewhere, and we don't know what it is? And it, they say that they built it. <laughs> Their base during the student movement? I'm really not sure about that. Did we find out about that in season one? We must have. If so, I've forgotten. Okay, and then there's this song choice. And it's playing it straight. All of this has an undercurrent of, of tongue in cheek. It's weird. It's weird. This is what I mean by by it's playing it straight while overplaying it. It's overplaying all of these these moments, these emotional moments, or quote nostalgia, and it's using the music and the framing and and the the character reactions and interactions to do this and uh, recognizably cliche sentiments and lines and 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 character statements, right? All of that forms the picture of this is being built up to turn into a joke where it will all tumble down and it'll be funny. But it doesn't. It just builds and builds and builds. And then it just builds and builds and builds. And it just continues building and building and building until the payoff is this moment where this works, right? That it was actually a bit of a play from Shirogane trying to get her to, to ask him to be president again. Or at least being being ready for the possibility. And that works. The final payoff works. Everything building up to it doesn't. Very weird. Very weird. Yeah, I, I think that's the strangest segment of Kaguya thus far. To me. Because I, I didn't find it funny. I found little little bits and pieces in it funny, but the whole sequence isn't isn't comedic, right? I didn't find it funny, and I didn't find it legitimately emotional. Maybe maybe because it didn't seem like it was legitimately emotional. It seemed like it was over the top in the way that was intended to be turned into a joke. 
So why why would I get attached to these emotional moments if I think that that's going to be pulled away from me? Weird. Weird. I don't want to dwell. I don't. I don't, I don't want to keep dwelling on that too much. Um, I already have. But we're going to have elections next time. That should be interesting. And I don't know who the girl standing in front of the uh, the board is. She's got a, a yellow armband, so I assume she's already uh, in some way part of of bureaucracy within the school. Maybe maybe a disciplinary committee or something like that. That would make sense. Don't know, though. Probably going to be our competitor. So that'll probably be our focus of next time. Okay. Beyond the, the weirdness there, I still think that, that pretty much everything in this episode is, is excellent. I think that the construction of this bit is off, but all of the, the little bits and pieces within it are really good. Um... Character interactions, faces, the moments that we jump out uh, and and jump out of the real world into into insanity. And this whole thing about nicknames and such is fun and good and enjoyable. And then the eventual final payoff here at the end is solid as well. The moon bit was just good all the way through. I had I had a really good time with that section. Um, from Kaguya shooing the others away to her inevitably failed schemes to the way that they backfire on her to the way that we turn the the the, the segment into a bit more of a, a a genuine emotional moment between them to the final ending when Shirogane re realizes how badly he's fucked up in his own mind, even though what he was doing was probably the right move. Uh, yeah. All pretty fucking glorious, I would say. Really cool. This, the whole basis of this segment, it doesn't work for me. Individual pieces and the stuff built on top of it, great, good, solid. Core of it, I, I, I don't get what it's going for. I don't understand. Okay, neat. Um... Let's watch another one. Okay. Yeah, it's only yeah, it's only like 2:30 p.m. I will watch Kaguya-sama season 2 episode 4, so I will take a breaky thingy, do a sinky thingy and be back in just a moment for episode 4. See you in a minute. Peace. All right, welcome back. We are good to go for episode 4 of Kaguya-sama Love is War. I've got it up. It's ready to go. Beep beep timer. All right. Mm -mm. Jeez. Oh, it's a tragedy. It's tragedy. Makes sense. I, I ask like that. But why? I need a reason. Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Sounds like a bugged game. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> you want to bet? Yeah, that's a very scary idea. Oh no. Look, if there's one thing we know about Hayasaka, it is that she is goddamn competent. And if you give her that as a mission. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, 
Oh, that was a swap to the... No, it wasn't. I thought it was a swap to the box that he puts the gold chain in. Oh, that's, that's the girl. Yeah, that one. There's another one with a yellow armband next to her. Okay. So new characters. Who are big enough to be in the OP. For what role, I wonder? Uh-oh. Is that... Oh, that's fucking horrifying. Yeah, she is. I don't know, dude. Oh my god, she is going hard. Oh my god, she is going hard. She's She's got the whole this, and the whole this, and the whole this. She's got, got all of it. Oh fuck. I'm just gonna ask for for advice. Oh my god. Please help me. She's really good. And she's really, really good. Yeah. How could you fall for her? For her moves? I don't think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's just eating it up. Just bobbleheading. That's awesome. The chewed up straw. Nope. She's real good. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you think? Do you think? I don't think so. I think there are probably... Hmm? Oh, we're doing tutoring. <laughs> Windows has encountered an error. <laughs> You you don't. Oh, but it gets her in. Yeah. Ah, oh, we are we are of the same, the same breed. Birds of a feather. Ah, uh, 
the the cute sleeping moment. Fucking brilliant. And still there. Did you? Did you, though? Uh, that's bullshit. Yeah, she was conscious the whole time. Jessica is fucking scary. Kimi is a side piece? What? You're going too far. You're going too far. <gasps> Best possible result. Bye. But that was really the play. That was Hayasaka's real play, wasn't it? Ha 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 I believe she could do it in a month. You did. Was, was he... Wait, what was that? What? Was he pretending to be cool when he actually hates coffee? I'm not sure. Okay, back to the classic. Hmm. So, you've got... Chica as your election advisor? Like you? Hmm. You see you? It's you. It's you. <gasps> Crash. Ah, I apologize for your delusions. <laughs> complete... Complete persona change. What the fuck? Wait, he really doesn't... He really doesn't... <laughs> I like Yarasaka. <laughs> nope. There is the scoop. Uh, 
Oh no. <laughs> We're treating you like a wedding. Holy shit. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? What are you talking about? The most awkward conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> Not even a little bit. Oh no, he's gonna get swept along in it. <laughs> Oof. Ha ha ha. You just haven't figured it out. <sighs> oh. Oh. It's a great shot. Uh huh. Uh huh. Is he thinking about actually confessing to her? I mean, he won't, but. It would be great if you actually came to that conclusion at this point, but that would end the show, so. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Or anything else? Ah. Well played, Kaguya. That's that's a legitimate concern. <sighs> okay. These two again, okay. Nice. Miko Ino. <laughs> He's just doing being modest. <laughs> Might want a campaign still. Yeah, I would watch out for that. Oof. Oh. Oh. For what? Okay.
In what way? Oh, there she is. Yeah, but we'll see. Sounds a lot like Chica. Oh, it's on. Okay. That's the yellow. Pet, pet. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you're lowering yourself, bud. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, she is serious. You should take her seriously. Yeah. You guys kind of seem like the bad guys here. That voice definitely, yeah, that voice definitely isn't helping Ishigami. <laughs> yeah, you're getting the shit kicked out of you. Hmm? Hmm? Big fan? Do you want a picture? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> huh? What? What? How she acts? I mean, in some ways, no. Sorry. Okay. Ah, okay. So it's not quite rational. <laughs> Got it. She was. Uh. <laughs> All right. Sure. You are not, but you will try. Yeah, how are, why are you over there, Chica? <laughs> Flattery, eh? A worthy opponent. Hmm? Is there a mistake? I can't read it. 
I assume it's it's something about making our dress code more strict. Ha. Huh. Oh, poor Kaguya. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done, Chica. Okay. This was a good one. Okay, I think this episode was excellent. Uh, I do think the first half is is stronger than the second half. The whole the whole build up to uh, the actual encounter between the two of them is wonderful, and the the tension and just just weight of expectations on them is pretty fucking lovely. And the eventual the eventual finishing moment when he finally asks the question and she answers in a very fun way that to answer your question and any other questions you ask yes gladly that's that's good and well i mean on a meta level what it does is she essentially just accepted his love confession right right because the premise of this interaction is that her expectation is that he's going to confess to her right and so she's prepared to say yes to that, but he asks her to do that. And so she says yes to that, but also to anything else you would have asked in this circumstance. She effectively accepted his confession, but it doesn't quite work that way, but it does kind of work that way, which is really cute and really good. Okay. So we have the introduction of a new character, uh, Eno, and she is a first year and she is very self-serious and she is very small. But uh seems like a worthy a worthy match or a worthy rival for for Shiragane. Now we do see her alongside the other student council members within the OP. I know this is sort of like meta stuff, right? Um that that she's amongst the group here and then a little bit later uh we see her amongst the group again that has entered. So she's actually in the student council room. It seems like she's going to lose. Um Shirogane will win and will keep the status quo, but she will enter and and take some kind of role within the student council or or like uh secondary to it. Which is interesting. I wonder what she'll do. And I wonder if the idea here is that uh Shirogane will come to respect her as an individual and will be like, Okay, come see how the student council actually functions so that you can take over when I'm gone. That could make sense, because she seems she seems very serious and and competent and genuine, which is good. And then there's this first segment, which is by far the the, the best part for me. So we open on this. We we lead into I didn't say easily. I didn't say easily. And what she says is very clear. How could you not make any progress whatsoever? It's so pathetic. Are you saying you could make the president fall in love with you? Probably. And. Then she adds the 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 easily and the one day and those kind of fuck fuck Hayasuka over. But the big thing here is Hayasuka is goddamn terrifying because she is uh, manipulative and and capable of it. 
to the extreme and she's really good at it i mean we get we get all of it here right the the hair down the outfit and then just this little this little jump this yep that that's that persona she has activated it this persona is active kaguya is spying and she is good. Oh, she is fucking scary good. Asking him about PCs, asking him for help and teaching. Awful. Terrifying. She does this little bounce thing here. Yep. Evil. How could she? And she's lying through her teeth over and over and over, and he just cannot get it at all. At all. Which is great. The whole thing works. All of Kage's reactions to it are excellent. This one is a particular favorite. She just goes like windows when it, it screws up. Wonderful. The the falling asleep thing. So sneaky. So smart. So evil. She creates like five different generic anime romance scenarios over the course of this one day at the library. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. But the best part, I think, is the payoff. She asks him out. Do you want to try going out once? And then gives him, like, soft touch, right? And, like, it doesn't have to be serious. Which is an interesting play, let's say. If there was an, a, another girl you really like, you could be with her and keep me as your side piece. Working her way in. But also, it's it's a bit of, of that desperation because she has a time limit, right? But the payoff here is really good. Shirogane effectively confesses in this moment, although he doesn't know that, that Kage is watching. But, no, I have a girl that I like. That's great. That's good. He will not be tempted. They They do seem to be getting closer and closer to actually communicating with each other and actually like understanding each other and confessing it's pretty interesting like the the rooftop sequence they came really close the the when they're forced to meet here at the end they came really close and i would say that what he says to hayasaka comes really close as well it's getting closer makes sense given that they i think only have one more year of high school so cool uh seeing her switch her personas so completely and go full gyarusaka uh when interacting with him the day after and he doesn't recognize her amazing that's that's good and then just the way this rumor spirals out of control and goes utterly insane is is wonderful and really glorious and then we are curious about what is going to be happening next time when we dig in and dive into these elections fully. Should be fun. Why she wants Chika as a vice president? Uh, no, she just idolizes her piano playing. She just she just thinks super highly of her, but she doesn't actually realize that Chika's a, a, a goofus. Okay, cool. I think this was a strong episode. The The whole Hayasaka bit is really good and definitely elevates her among my personal character standings. This is a good section. Good episode. Solid all around. Fun times. Very, very nice. We'll end here. Uh, yeah. We'll end here for now. And I think that means that we're actually caught up with Kaguya, so I, I will plan to maybe be watching the next episode of Kaguya when it actually airs on Saturday. Okay? Okay, so see you next week-ish. Hope you enjoyed this these two episodes of Kaguya. I certainly did. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you next week. Peace. <laughs>